let us rise together as we share in the call to worship. Every culture has its own bread. It may be leavened or unleavened, round or rectangular, flat or airy, so sourdough or sweet dough. Jesus understands the significance of bread and uses it as a metaphor to describe God's comprehensive care for all people. Jesus himself is the bread of life who satisfies all who hunger for righteousness. Let us pray. God of mercy, be above us to judge us. Be within us to convict us of our sin. Teach us who worship false gods to fear you, the one true God. Teach us who commit evil deeds to obey you and you alone. Teach us who oppress our neighbors the ways of righteousness and truth. Teach us who do not pursue peace and fertility of war and the blessing of sham. God was in Christ reconciling the world, satisfying our hunger and thirst after righteousness. Jesus is the bread of life. All who come to him and humbly confess their sin will be filled with God's mercy and sustained by God's grace. So taste and see how God cares for you. Know and believe the good news of God's love. Amen.
Trinity, one God, stretches out the heavens, who sends light to the nations, who gives breath to us all. Let us pray. God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We come and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Children are invited to come forward as we share in a children's time together. Good to see you all. How you doing? Good. Hey there. Now, are some of you the ones going to Camp Sequinota this week? Is that right? Yeah, okay. Well, Ben, they'll have to tell you all about it, and maybe you'll be able to go next time, right? Maybe. It's a lot of fun, and boy, I have somebody's lunch box here. Whose is this? I think it's Skyler's, okay? He's, he's back there right now. But some of you that were here last week, do you remember this lunch box being pretty full? Were you here last week? Yeah, some of you were. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. What happened was we remembered that it was that time where it was the little boy that gave his lunch when everybody was hungry. They had just listened to Jesus for like the whole day and they were so interested and they wanted to know more. They were being fed by the in, on the inside. But Jesus knew they were also hungry and he told them, to sit down and then they would find oh my goodness there was a boy that had the lunch that was willing to say maybe I can share and Jesus took that the loaves and the fish blessed it broke it and gave it and was anybody still hungry after that do you remember that no they were not can you believe that many people were fed by a boy's lunch Okay, but you know, today that story continues. That's why I brought this same lunchbox. Because afterwards, people were amazed by that. And you know what they started to follow? They started to follow the signs. They started to follow the miracles. They started to follow, hey, I want to see something like that again. Because that's pretty, that makes you say, right, wowza, like amazing, right? So, they, you know, we're going to follow this Jesus and see what else he can do, right? But Jesus knows that and says, you know, the sign was to show more about me and who Jesus really is. And what they were hungry for wasn't really for all the signs and all this amazing stuff, but it was for what God could feed them on the inside. So we know that we need to eat, right? Because if we go without a, a day without eating, how many would be just a little bit hungry? How about a lot hungry? Yeah. How about if you didn't drink for a day? Be really thirsty, right? We really need to drink that water and uh, keep hydrated, right? So God knows we're physical. We're, we have a body that needs fed. But, and we know that. How about our minds? Can you think if you just were bored and sat somewhere all day doing nothing, would your mind would kind of wander around and not be really functioning real well, right? Sometimes we need those days, but 
most of the time we need things that we can learn and engage with, right? So our minds are fed. But sometimes, do you ever really think about your spirit being fed? You think about that? You have the Bibles at home. We have Bibles right here. See the Holy Bible right there that opens up. And sometimes it's through song that we hear scripture. How about Romans 16 and 19? Right? There's a song that goes about that in Sequinota, right? And, and we learn about scripture and we take it into our hearts so we can apply it. That's the type of feeding that God's talking about. God's presence in your life in wonderful, wonderful ways. So God knows we need to eat. God knows we need things to, to occupy our mind and to learn. But God knows our spirit needs to be fed. Will you remember that your spirit needs to be fed? Let me see your hands if you'll remember that. Will you remember that? Okay. And that, remember, that's just as, that's important, like feeding uh, yourselves. Sometimes we need to know there's safe shelter in our life, our homes, our safe place. We trust that. Healthy food, clean water to drink, and caring communities around us. You think St. Matthew's a pretty uh, fairly caring community? Or how about a great caring community? You think it's a great caring community? I do too. I do too. I think a lot of us know that about St. Matthew. And we are praying for you as you head out to seek Winota as well and learn a lot more about God's love and all of creation as well through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so let us pray together. Jesus, we thank you that you are a God who loves us so much. You remind us of what amazing things you can do, but most of all, who you truly are. And that means so much to our lives. We're never alone because you are a living God who is alive. You died for us and for our sins and for the things that we do that keep us away from you, but you rose again. Help us to live in that good news of your love every day. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you'd like, um, you can have one of these. There's some roll-ups, and there's also some of these little gummies there. So whichever one you like, okay? You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. There's plenty for everyone, okay? You can take one for a second. There you go. Sure. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Our first lesson comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 16. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out of this wilderness to kill us, to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? for they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Be to God. We'll read uh, responsively verse by verse, Psalm 78. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided for them food enough. The 
raining down flesh upon them like dust and flying birds like the sand of the seas. So the people ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. Our second lesson comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of, God, of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were some, were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John from the sixth chapter. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, where did you come, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you were looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us? so that we may see it and believe you. The work you are performing. Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it was written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life. To the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of our Lord. Please pray with me, if you will. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight. Lord, who is our strength and our very life. Amen. So in the midst of this summer, 
July into now August, we find a number of weeks focused on the bread, the bread, true bread of life, the bread of heaven. It's actually these five weeks, and it started last Sunday. I thought about placing a bread maker somewhere in the sanctuary and had the aroma of baking bread. But I thought, you know what, the aroma might be a little bit of a distraction. So we wouldn't do that for this Sunday. But if we begin to focus on those cravings and that desire of our, you know, what we would like to put into our mouth and digest and the good taste of bread, right, when it's freshly baked. But if we're just thinking physically, that's where Jesus wants to redirect us. We're certainly whole beings. We are physical, mental, spiritual beings. But Jesus today is pointing us to that sense of sustenance of true bread. For we need that kind of sustenance in our life. Not just on the sunshine days, but in the challenging days. We need this to fortify our lives, and God knows that. And so there's so much to, if you will, unpack and slice about this bread of heaven, this bread of, of life. As we are nurtured today, we come together, we share in fellowship with one another, certainly we share in the meal that God provides through bread broken and wine poured. As I mentioned earlier, I love the fact that last week we talked about the boy who offered his lunch, and God took that offering, Jesus took it, and raised it into God's heart. And God and the Holy Spirit, Jesus, multiplying that bread and that lunch for all to have enough. Sometimes we don't think we have enough. We think just by only what we see and not with the eyes of faith. And so God is trying to help us here in these passages. Jesus is encouraging us to look deeper, look by more than just the surface, because that boy with the lunch certainly couldn't feed 5,000, but with the blessing of Jesus and the breaking of it, and the passing of it, it is enough. God's food feeds us. So the crowds wanted more, and that's what we're getting at today. The signs that pointed not to just the razzle-dazzle, if you will, of this wonderful miracle, but in a true relationship that feeds us, that nurtures us that we can invite others into and continue to know that that circle can grow in the midst of our community here at St. Matthew, in the midst of Martinsburg, in the midst of our state and nation and world. God's kingdom is going forth, even though we at times don't hear that in the daily news. We hear about a wilderness experience in the first lesson today. And I think that's important because our life is not always the sunshine, let me have everything all planned out days. We experience those times where we don't know where the, our next foot might even be planted. And so it's natural for, as the human beings, the Israelites were saying, you know, we don't have any idea what's happening here. We should just go back to Egypt. We should just go back to where we were and forgot what God really did for them and bringing them forth. And that God would provide for them the manna and the quail. They would be fed. Sometimes as children in our hearts as well as children in age, we're not always satisfied with what God has given. We want something a little different. We have our list. And God cares about our list. 
But God is also reminding us that there is so much more. And to pay attention to the, the bigger themes, the bigger theme of purpose and what God would choose for us in the midst of the gifts that he's given and that God continues to pour out in our lives. So we asked the question, and maybe the question was asked, what is true bread? Who is true bread? And sometimes it's only in those wilderness experiences that we go deeper. We want to say that, yes, let's continue, even on the sunshine days, to go deeper into that faith. But I can't help but think of all of you know of that soccer team in Thailand trapped in the dark cave for days and weeks and the water filling up into the crevices of that cave. They needed to have something stronger in their spirit than just the sustenance of food. Mentally, they had to think beyond the present situation. Identity and the identity of the group had to become foremost something that they could feed on and have a sense of there's more to come, even when it looks so grim. And we can identify more and more of who the bread of life is that sustains us. As a community of faith, identifying this not only as a building of St. Matthew, but as a living community of faith that reaches out with the bread of life. And it might be in the ways that we share with one another, encourage one another. It might be so many different aspects of faith that individuals need. And sometimes only God knows and is working in the midst of a body of believers that then reaches out into our community and our world. This past week, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, there's a day camp, Camp Sequinota. And as the day camp in, uh, in Williamsburg took place, we're thankful that we know some of those counselors who were there as Matthew and as Hannah and as Kaylin. And they continue to share in the gifts of God. What I love about it is that it was college-age students reaching also with high school students, reaching elementary school students. And it was parents and grandparents gathered around. It was a community of faith, learning to go deeper in faith, just not fair-weather Christians, fair-weather people following God only when the sun shines because we had a lot of rain, a lot of rain this past week. But even over at Canoe Creek, we were able to say, you know what, even in the rain, let's sing, let's lift our voices, let's, even though we're a little bit wet, we're going to still move forward. And thankfully, that sun did come out in the afternoon. I think of you sending many of the youth to Sequinota and faith formation, that sense of the living God in the community. This past week, I'm just thinking of various vignettes I've been able to experience with some of you. Uh, Skyler and I were at the Hollidaysburg Library on Tuesday night. Miss Jean was there, science teacher, uh, and as she shared with her of her reptiles, the children learned more and more, and the families learned more and more about creation and about the uniqueness of what is created. For me, it was a great lesson in all of creation as well. So take these opportunities, the picnic coming up, this swimming uh, night at the pool gathered within the community, times where we gather together at Homewood and the village, knowing that God provides. Doesn't matter what age of life we are. What matters is we're connecting to that bread of life and receiving what God has given us through the life, death, and resurrection of our living God. We are not left alone. God makes a way. God opens the door. 
And God is that living bread nurturing us, even in the times that we did not expect it or we don't even see it. As we reach out, even with that grain of a mustard seed, God will respond. Let us continue to celebrate the living bread in our midst. Amen. Together, let us profess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of the Lord. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Lord of the Virgin Mary. He suffered the Holocaust of God, was
trusting in our loving and almighty God, who abundantly provides the bread of life to all who hunger, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, you give gifts and talents to every member of the church. Strengthen all your children and bring them to a full understanding and maturity in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creator God, our complex and wonderful world is a sure sign of your abundance and care. Provide for every creature and rain down the bread of heaven that gives life to the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Peaceful God, draw the nations of the world to harmony and mutual understanding. Bind all of humanity in the unity of love and peace that comes through the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for those who are hungry, homeless, and who have lost family or friends. Lead them to places of safety, food, and rest. We pray especially for those we now name in our hearts or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Infinite God, we praise you for the lives of those who have died in Christ. Keep our hearts in hope, for we have all received the food that endures to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all the churches of the Allegheny Synod, we particularly pray today for the Assembly First Evangelical Lutheran Church in Phillipsburg. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty and loving God, we look to you in hope and trust, knowing that you will do far more than we ask or imagine. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord.
O oh God, in Christ you call us to lead a life worthy of our calling. We come before you and implore you to accept our gifts. We offer our diversity that it may be made one by your reconciling spirit. We return to you the talents conferred by your creative goodness. We present to you our acts of obedience in response to your trust. May who we are and what we do be acceptable in your sight through Christ our Redeemer. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and our greatest joy that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him, your beloved son. In the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh. in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord took bread. He blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, our Lord took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the cup of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us eat, for now the feast is spread. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice, may we thirst for your way of peace, for you are Lord forevermore. Amen. Now may God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we ask or imagine, Grant you the gifts of faith and hope. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Go in peace, the Spirit sends us forth to serve. Thanks be to God.